Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and in this short video I'm going to look at why tilt shift lenses in particular, shift lenses are so important to what I do and why you can't just fix it in software. Now, I get asked this a lot from people and I said, yeah, these lenses that you've covered, they look great, um, but surely I can do all of this in software. And yes, you can do quite a lot. Um, I'm just talking about shift here. Tilt is a bit more difficult to reliably do. Some would say you can't do tilt in software, but shift, yes. Here's three shift lenses, actually. This is 17 mil, 24 mil Canon lens. They have tilt as well, but I'm just looking at shift here. The movements are shifted. This is the new Lauer 20 mil shift lens, which is just shift that's shifted as well. I've got reviews, I've got loads of information about all of these if you're curious about more of them. And some people think, well, this is just something you use for architecture in pictures of buildings. Well, no, um, I'll come back at the end to some uses I do in landscape use, landscape photography. Um, some more complex uses of shift, which are not quite so intuitive. But basically, if I point an image, if I point the camera upwards. Buildings lean back. Let's have a look at an example of it. Here's a picture in front of my house, and this is taken for 24 mil lens, and the camera is level. Now, with the camera level, vertical lines, i.e. the structure of the house and the houses next to it, are all vertical in the frame. Now, that's fine. Uh, I'm an architectural photographer. Uh, my clients expect images with straight lines in them. And uh, it's, it's a useful thing anyway. It certainly makes pictures look a little bit better. Slight leans look as if you've not fixed things. Dramatic leans, well, that's, a, that's an artistic choice whether you want to do it or not. But slight leans look wrong, so you want to get things dead straight. But sure, you can do this in software and Photoshop, Lightroom, all kinds of things you can do to fix this. Here's the image, camera looking dead ahead flat level camera, vertical lines. Well, that's fair enough. What's wrong with that? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with that. I've got too much foreground and I haven't got the top of the house. Now, I might be able to go back further, but I've still got, the, I've still got a lot of the foreground here. So this is where having a shift lens helps because I can shift the lens upwards. Why bother with that? Why not just point the camera upwards? Well, if I do point the camera upwards, and this is quite subtle the effect here um, this is with the camera I'm, I'm using a 24 mil lens here with the camera tilted upwards now at 24 millimeters you can't see it really obviously but the moment you look at lines such as the doorways the front you can see that the picture is actually leaning like that well that looks easy enough to fix i can i've got several different tools i can use for that uh, this is DxO Viewpoint. Now it's available as a plugin as well. I've looked at this. I've got lots of links to things, additional information for most of the things I'm covering here. I'll include them in the comments uh, and the information for the video. So if you want to follow things through, I've got other videos, I've got articles, and I've got an entire book I've written about how to use tilt shift lenses if you're really into it. Um, and thanks to everyone who's bought the book, by the way. Yes, it's, uh, it is appreciated. Now. I'm just setting this. All I need to do to run this software, I just set two markers as to two vert what should be vertical lines and it stretches the picture out. Dead easy. Certainly a lot easier than using a shift lens, you'd think. Well, this one here is about a thousand pounds. It's a good one. These are up around about two thousand pounds. Even if you get them second hand, um, and it's worth looking for second-hand examples if you want to know. You'll find they're quite expensive. Cheaper version might be something like Samyang 24mm shift lens. Um, I reviewed that a few years ago. Perfectly okay for starting out with. Um, a few things to note about it, but a good lens. But still £600 or so, something like that. So perhaps something you're not going to just buy on a whim. What's wrong with doing it in software? Well. Once I've corrected the image, the problem is that in straightening it out, I create these two black bits at either side, these two triangles. I'm losing some of the image. So right away, I've now got a corrected image. All the verticals are okay, looks fine. 
but I've got these black bits. Now, I can probably fix with Photoshop little bits of them where there's no image detail, but that's a lot of work. Uh, far easier just to keep the camera level, shift the lens upwards and do use that. Now, this is a shot with the 24mm with it shifted upwards. So we've now got perfectly straight lines in it. We've got the full view. If I just go back to the previous one, you'll see how much we've lost. And there is one of my personal key reasons for wanting to use a shift lens rather than fixing software is that the wider angle shots I go with, the more those black bits at the side, the more I'm gonna to have to crop. Now, when I crop this, compare it with you know, that, it's quite a lot, and that's 24 mil. When you go to wider angle lenses, you lose even more. So I like to know what I've got in the viewfinder when I take the shot. I like to be able to decide at the time I'm taking the shot, what is in the frame. I know I can crop it afterwards, but it's much easier to crop than add in stuff that wasn't there, that you missed it or you've lost because of fixing like that. Now, 14 millimeter lens. Now this is just a straight 14 mil lens. Uh, there are no 14 mil shift lenses. There's a 15 mil Lauer shift lens, which is excellent one, which I've got reviews of, linked again in the notes. Um, that's a, we're now got quite a distinct lean to everything. Now, you could say, well, I quite like that look. Yeah, that's fine. And sometimes there is a use for uh, shots like this at angles like that. But remember, I work for construction companies, architects. They do not tend to like pictures of their buildings leaning over. Now, the marketing departments and people putting together brochures and web pages like a few of these shots occasionally just because they make them look a bit more dynamic or whatever. But the people who sign the checks really don't like this style of them. So I have to be very careful when I'm using this sort of stuff. So that's a 14 pointed upwards. Now if I try and correct that one, you can see there are massive amounts on either side that I'm losing. And uh, now with experience, you can guess this to some extent, but it really means you end up with tall, thin, narrow pictures like that. And generally, I don't have that many people wanting tall, thin, narrow pictures like that. So that's it. It's the, the real bit is about predictability. But I mentioned landscape. Now, this is just shifting lenses up and down. So there's shift lens as the, where the camera goes and there's the lens shifted upwards. Now, you don't have to shift up, down. You can shift left, right. You can shift diagonally. And it's diagonal shift. And this is something that I found quite a lot of photographers, even ones quite experienced in using shift lenses, don't appreciate some of the power of using diagonal shift because with diagonal shift, you're not only adjusting the vertical aspects of the apparent perspective, but you're changing horizontal aspects as well. Now, this is a tricky one to explain, so hence I've got articles and videos looking specifically at that. Once again, linked in the notes below. But, shot here of this boat, I'm using diagonal shift to emphasize part of the frame. And in particular, this dark sky, you'll notice that the sky conveniently lines up and points to over here. In fact, the camera in this particular shot is pointing towards the blue boat and the lens is shifted upwards, diagonally across like that. And that is changing this perspective or apparent perspective, I should say, because the only way you can truly change perspective is moving. But this one here changes the view of a shot. Now, I've done that to emphasize this boat and to emphasize the sky, the difference in the sky from one side of the frame to the other. It's helped by these long converging lines here, but this is using diagonal shift. So I've got lots more about this. Um, you can't do this easily in software because if you imagine you try to do this in software, if you correct for vertical tilt of the camera, you end up with black, you know, with the black bits on the side. If you try and do it horizontally, you end up with black bits at the top and bottom as well. 
And the combination of it means that you end up cropping an awful lot out of your image. You can tr do things like this in, in software, but you lose so much of your image and it becomes almost impossible to predict what it's going to look like. This is something that I just happen to like using shift lenses for. This, if I remember rightly, was probably taken with the 24 millimeter here. Um, just shifted diagonally across. Just to finish on one more a landscape shot here. Um, this is further out from, this is uh, the direction the other one was looking in. This is looking inland. This is up at Amble in Northumberland. And here I've shifted the lens over this way and it completely changes the look of the sky and everything. You can play around with tricks like this. You don't have to make it as obvious as this. Um, these are partly shots I took to illustrate the effect. But once you get used to using things like this, the lack of movements becomes just that little bit irksome when you're using a normal lens. You keep thinking, now, if only I could add a little bit of shift or do something here. You also have to spend time and actually decide when you don't want to use shift because that's important as well. Uh, as I say, remember that buildings leaning over like that, some people, particularly in the design departments and graphic departments where want dynamic looking pictures like that but you need to be able to produce the proper ones as well so there you go that's why i use shift lenses mainly it's about predictability but it's also about all the little effects and changes i can bring in so anyway, i hope that's been of interest um I will be back uh, for people who, who wonder where my printer reviews have gone. Um, I'm looking at getting some more printers in and doing some more testing. And uh, when I do that, I'm hoping to do a bit more printing of some of these shots and I can show some of this stuff as well. But anyway, please do subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. And um, thank you very much.